Hello, hello and welcome to the actually very first um, Genman Safari Facebook Live. Um, I am joined by uh, Jonathan Guanele Dube, um, who has been one of our most loyal um, and passionate guides on the forefront of leading our, our travelers through Africa. Um, Jonathan studied in Bulawayo, he worked in Matopos, and um, holds a, a learner professional guides license and has been actually guiding for Genman Safaris um, for three years, even though he's been guiding since 1997. So I'm not too sure what took you so long, Jonathan, to join us. <laughs> um, and uh, Jonathan, um, just so I don't forget it, it's not his birthday just yet. His birthday is on the 7th of July. So take a note, everyone, if... Um, if you want to wish him a happy birthday, welcome, um, Jonathan. Where are you joining us from today? Uh, thank you, Katja. Uh, thanks for having me, and thanks for everyone who has taken time to join us. Um, joining you from Victoria Falls in beautiful Zimbabwe. Oh wow, Jonathan! How um, how is life in Victoria Falls at the moment? Um, I guess because of. Uh, the pandemic, that uh, it has put a stop to basically all forms of life, so to speak. Uh, so Victoria Falls being a tourist town, I, I, I would say, is at a standstill at the moment. Uh, but, yeah, uh, I guess um, the pandemic has really um, brought Victoria Falls to a standstill and seeing, um, as I heard yesterday, as we learned yesterday, 85% of the people employed in Vic Falls yeah. are in tourism. It's um, it is tricky, but it I is mean the, the pandemic. Heart and soul, has, yes. yes, it is the heart and soul of Victoria Falls. The pandemic has, yeah. however, um, really dominated the media. So I would like to um, rather focus on you, on guiding what you bring to Thank this you. continent, what you bring to people, what you bring to travelers, which. I so admire Jonathan, I must say, just now before we went live, I said to him, I'm always so nervous of these Facebook lives. And um, I said, you've got it so easy, Jonathan. You are so <laughs> used to just chatting, making new friends every every couple of weeks because you're so used to um, chatting to strangers. So, so I, I'm a little jealous and I truly admire what um, what you bring to this country and what you bring um to, to your community. Um, Jonathan, why don't you tell us about the first tour that you've ever guided um, for Genman Safaris? Um, for Genman, my first uh, tour that I guided, I remember vividly, I was with uh, Mama Grace, the German speaking uh, translator, and we were <laughs> doing a TA, uh, which is a tailor-made uh, tour for German uh, with Germans. And uh, we went through, most of it was in Namibia. That was my very first uh, trip that I did for German. <laughs> for people who don't work in our office. Um, yes. So the TA is an abbreviation actually for um, our Great Trans African Lodge Safari. It starts yes. in Windhoek, right? And goes all yes. the way down to uh, Sossusfly, Sestrium, Swakopmund, and takes in Etosha and travels uh, through the previous trip, Botswana. Um, Okavango Delta, um, Maun, Kwai, Nata, right? Then Chobi, Wangi, and Vic Falls. I got yeah. it! <laughs> <laughs> Kudos to you. Jeez, that is, um, that's, a, that's a long trip you guided. And does that make you fall in love um, with Genman, I guess? What's oh, answer? yes. Um, I think my first love for, 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 for Genman, I mean, from, uh, you know, being outside of Genman then, was, uh, I mean, the style of vehicles that you guys uh, have. And uh, for me, I mean, I thought that those vehicles, I mean, were built for the African roads and they look beautiful. <laughs> Thank you, Jonathan. Such a such a lovely compliment. Um, the the vehicles are certainly uh, making by Garth Jenman. Um, he's the, the founder of Jenman Safaris. Um, certainly, me as a woman and never had anything to do with those cars. So the, here is a shout out to him. So, Jonathan, tell me about guiding. What influenced you to actually become a guide, and what does it mean to you? I know. 
in, uh, in the African um, culture and African community. It is a massive honor to be a guide. It's a job that I could I could never do, and I have the utmost utmost respect for. Um, and um, I love being guided through the through the African bush. Um, so, tell me, what was it that influenced you to become a guide? Um, uh, I will I will say in a nutshell that uh, love influenced me to be a guide, of which I will explain. Um, growing up in the city, because I was born in Bulawayo. Uh, I could not wait, you know, for the school holidays, uh, you know, so that we could be cut it off to, to the village, you know, to spend the holidays there with the grandmas, you know, and the old folk in the village. And it was in the village that, uh, you know, we got to learn about trapping birds, the, you know, bushcraft, so to speak, uh, what fruits to pick, uh, what uh, I mean, plants not to touch. Uh, at the end of the day, I would say my bushcraft uh, was uh, 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 honed in rural Africa. And on uh, the second note of saying that love uh, influenced um, my becoming a guide, I dated uh, Rose back in the days when I started, who I later married. And uh, she was working for a relative of hers who was running a tour business. And the prerequisite back then was that when she was uh, to renew her tour operator's license, she had to attach uh, licenses of uh, guides in her employ. And the guides that she had, uh, she employed back then, that is Alice, God rest her soul, uh, were not qualified. And uh, <clears throat> then I took it, you know, as a challenge, you know, to read, uh, took an interest in this new field because I was working in retail. I was working for Edgar Stores then. And, uh, you know, going to pick up Rose at the end of the day, coming from Edgar's, I find these guys, they are immersed in their studies, uh, exchanging information. And then the seed was uh, planted then. And, uh, you know, having grown up in the, in the village, you know, it meshed and then I got to read and then 1997, I went and set for my LPH and uh, passed and uh, the rest is history. I am living, uh, you know, the best life as a guide now. Wow, Jonathan, what a what a love story intertwined with a work story. And um, so my next question on the list was actually who um, who was your role model? But it seemed like you were just inspired by other students or was there someone else who was um, a role model? Who was my role model? My role model, um, you know, like I said, that I, I, I was working for Edgar Stores. Uh, the, the retail shop had uh, an in-house magazine, which uh, was called The Club. And in one of the features that they had, uh, they had a guy called uh, Jeffrey Nare. And uh, mm -hmm. Jeffrey Nare, it said in this uh, issue of uh, The Club then that he was a professional guide. And, uh, you know, and uh, having started to read, I was so interested in everything that had to do with guiding with nature. And uh, he inspired me a lot. I mean, with the questions and answer, uh, answers that uh, were like in this publication. <clears throat> and uh, I also got to meet Jeffrey Nare. And uh, what a life-changing uh, uh, moment it was. He inspired me, took me under his wing. And um, the rest is like Jeffrey Nare is still uh, my role model. He's this gentle giant up to date so my mentor is still by my side that's the man who inspired me quite a lot that is a beautiful story jonathan and now you have actually developed into a role model um for a lot of for a lot of people i know you certainly inspire a lot of our travelers that go guiding with you um the feedback that we get afterwards is um extremely heartwarming. Um, Jonathan was the best. He's the best driver. He's the best guide. He knows so much. He looked after us. So um, that's generally the feedback we get from from, from guests traveling um, with you. But um, let's maybe talk 
about some more serious topics. So, or not too serious, are also... I'm of the big belief that everyone working and living and breathing the safari industry is making a phenomenal impact when it comes to conservation, looking after our wilderness and actually just creating awareness of, of yes. these last wilderness areas that, um, that we have. Um, so I always say every accountant, every um, safari consultant, travel specialist, just by by being part of, of selling Africa in, in a responsible way, you are making a big impact. So how, how do you feel the guiding world or you as a guide um, influenced or benefit uh, local communities surrounding national parks or also in the in the communities and, um, and destinations that you take our travelers to? Okay. And how can you see that impact, I guess? How, how are you welcomed? How, uh, and what does it mean to you? I would be interested. Uh, in how does the guiding world influence or benefit mm -hmm. communities yeah. around national parks? I would say um, the benefits, the influence is large, it's immense. Um, in that, uh, uh, if we take tourism, not guiding, etc., but we take tourism. Um, it is one of the four largest contributors to the GDPs of most of uh, our countries here in the SADC region, if not in Africa. Um, communities that are around national parks benefit in a big way, you know, from uh, the travelers who come from all over the world. There is uh, the concept of... Uh, uh, ecotourism and uh, it is that communities who are around national parks get to benefit. Here in Zimbabwe we had a concept uh, uh, that is called Campfire, the Campfire Project in which communities uh, who are affected by what's called the uh, human and animal uh, conflict uh, get to in a way learn to live and appreciate the wildlife that is around them. Uh, because when it comes to, you find that there is hunting, there is also uh, work in the lodges, in the hotels. You also have guides, you know, like uh, coming from Victoria Falls, we are employed in this industry. So those are the, uh, some of the benefits that we, we have uh, in, uh, in, in tourism. And uh, we have from our travelers, what is called responsible tourism, where these travelers, um, when they come over, they, uh, by virtue of coming, you know, like I said, that we find employment. You also find that they are contributing also to projects that are happening around, uh, uh, around these communities. Not to mention that uh, the different companies that I've worked for uh, also, uh, in a way, are involved, you know, in projects that are you know, around these uh, communities. Take, for example, uh, Peña, a project uh, which aimed to keep the girl child at school by providing sanitary uh, pads, washable sanitary pads, you know, uh, because girls have a challenge when it comes to menstrual uh, problems. But then this project uh, was wants to keep them in class because there's all these things, like if that is the time, they have to be staying at home. But Peña keeps them in the classroom. Um, Jonathan, thank you so much for bringing this up. And um, I guess my my next question to you, um, which I'm going to lead on to just now, but I want to... Um, I want to talk a little bit into the project Pena would be like how, how you're engaging with travelers about that, that, that are on your trip, because often travelers make the choice of coming to Africa mainly to see um, wildlife, to see beautiful scenery, to if they come to Cape Town, to, to taste great wines and, and, and do all of these things that they read in glossy magazines about. Or, um, but um, it's, not, it's not that often yet that travelers make the choice to, to come into Africa because they want to make a difference and because they, they want to choose a holiday where they can make a difference. And um, Jonathan mentioning Project Pena, it is a, a project that was born actually out of um, a conversation that I had um, with a... Uh, um, 
with a company in, in South Africa who was supporting their community that way. And it shocked me at that point. I didn't know that that girls living in rural communities do not have access to sanitary um, um, tools or equipment, um, whether it's pads, tampons, or anything that they require in order to, um, to sail through their monthly menstruation um, as, um, as uh, easy as, as we do. Um, and um, yeah, and for them to basically not go to school and miss school and miss exams and miss lessons and that what, five, five days a month, five to six days a month, um, that is um, that didn't didn't occur to me, and it was a, gre um, a real eye opener. So um, yeah, we we started the project. We raised quite a um, substantial amount of funds, and besides the funds that will help um, keeping the girls at school by providing sanitary uh, pads, washable sanitary pads, and um, and panties, we've um, also extended that project because of the donations we've received. Um, that um, now we empowered the community to uh, and taught them how to um, create these and make them themselves. So we created a little business. We or we encouraged um, the ladies of the community to create a little business. We purchase um, the sanitary pads and panties from them and then provide them to the girls, and also um, run a workshop once a once a year that teaches these, um, the girls and boys about general life skills when it comes to addiction, um, depression, bullying, um, and um, also menstrual um, menstrual issues, um, or just you know what we how we call it, um, fighting the taboo against menstruation. Um, so please, guys, if you do want to check out this project, um, go to our Grow Africa website. Um, growafrica.org and um, and have a look there for more details. And um, what travelers do not know, and maybe also some of our most of our guides do not know, that every actually every trip that travelers book, um, they are um, donating 50 US dollars to the Grow Africa Foundation um, by uh, by default. And um, then if we, uh, we, there's Gentlemen's Forest Supports, another foundation, which is the Conservation and Wildlife Fund in Wangi. So if your, if your group safaris goes or tailor-made safari goes into Wangi National Park, regardless of which property you're staying at, you are also donating 20 US dollars per person per night to a Conservation and Wildlife Fund, which is uh, uh, primarily um, focusing on anti-poaching work on the periphery of Wangi National Park. So... To get back to that question, I'm sorry that I stole your thunder there for a little bit, Jonathan. Um, where, how do you engage with travelers on these topics? Because as I mentioned, often travelers mainly come um, on the safari to see wildlife. How do you introduce them to it? Um, we, we, we have uh, sit down times, like uh, it could be at the end of the day, uh, after a safari and we get to, uh, you know, talk about the life around the communities or the lodge that we will be staying at. And it is in these, uh, you know, chats that we have that you get to bring in and questions come on the general lifestyle. Uh, you know, especially like I come from Zimbabwe, you have got lots of questions about Zimbabwe and, uh, you know, and uh, <clears throat> you get, um, to find that uh, all these questions crop up and uh, these subjects come in about religion, uh, just about uh, the day-to-day -day lives of our people. And it is then that you highlight, you know, uh, these projects that are going on around the communities and also, you know, all the questions that they pose to you. Uh, you have to uh, be on the ball and uh, answer them and satisfy, you know, uh, their curiosity so that they see the life uh, of the community through your eyes. Yeah, beautiful, Jonathan. There's some great and important work you're doing out there. And um, well, well done to you. I'm going to pose some questions, actually, that the audience is wondering here before I move on into all of these questions that I have prepared for you. Um, Jack is asking, um, COVID, so COVID-19, Corona, 
has uh, made people think about the environment. Do you think this will influence responsible tourism in any way? Or, or maybe the question, do you think that will influence how, um, how people will come on a guided group safari in any way? Um, we call it the new normal. And I think uh, COVID-19 uh, will change immensely travel and life in general. Um, people will get to think twice, you know, about their health. And we also, uh, as the, the tourism industry, uh, this has impacted us. And now the way we will conduct business going forward uh, will also uh, change. And uh, we have to think about uh, how, uh, as individuals, we, um, we relate to each other, you know, so that we keep each other safe. And also we think about the environment. And uh, if I look at the background of this, there are questions asked as to um, the origins of, uh, of, of COVID-19. Uh, and some saying that it came... Uh, probably from uh, eating some meat from wild animals. And now that it is here, we have to think, you know, about saving those animals so that we get, don't get pandemics like this going forward. Thank you, um, Jonathan. And thank you for sharing your views. Um, so that leads me on to the next question. And I want to know, going on safari with you, and unfortunately I haven't had the privilege to be on safari with you, um, something that I hope to rectify um, yes. very soon. Um, Jonathan, how can a traveler best prepare for going on safari with you? What, what must they, what, what should they do? Okay, how can a traveler prepare for a safari with me? Um, Coming on safari with me, you are coming to what I would love to term the biggest natural auditorium in the world. You know, <laughs> this my beautiful Africa. Uh, there's so much on offer in this beautiful auditorium that I'm speaking of. Talk of the different national parks and the attractions that you uh, that are around. Uh, you know me and uh, these countries that we visit. So when you come through on a safari with me, uh, I'll take you to these beautiful sites and um, all the uh, information, you know, that has to do factual, honest, you know, uh, will come from me. I will unpack all these beautiful vistas and scenario, I mean, scenes, uh, you know, in a very professional, entertaining uh, way that we live in an indelible mark you know, uh, in your life, because I believe that people uh, have what they call a bucket list. And it is humbling for me for someone to take their time and come to Africa. And uh, on my beat, I have to, you know, uh, uh, lift up my game so that I get to meet, you know, the expectations of this uh, 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 individual and also to surpass them you know, so that at the end of the day, when they go back home, they become our ambassadors and they get to, uh, you know, tell those back home about the beauty of the motherland. So, Jonathan, what you're basically saying, just come with an open mind and, um, and a, mental, a mental notebook, right? Yes. <laughs> okay, that's, that's basically how it is, yes. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I am sorry. It's my natural instinct to sum to sum up someone's answer. I'm sorry. I didn't. I really. Yeah. I really don't mean to do that. <laughs> I'm sorry. So, jo Jonathan, thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you for tickling out my faults there. Um, so. Talking about our trips, I see one of the guests here, Karen's asking whether we are still running our safaris or whether they have been um, put on hold. Sorry, I don't know if it's Karen or Karen, so I do apologize um, about um, pronunciation if I got it wrong. So in Southern Africa, our safaris are currently um, on hold, unfortunately. I've heard news yesterday from one of our um, our guided groups managers actually that Namibia is testing um, that Namibia is testing um, 
trips with a few travelers uh, in the next upcoming weeks. And um, so we're hoping that slowly but surely some bubbles will open in terms of that some nationalities can come back. We will be the first one there. We've got um, all protocols and procedures in place for our own tours, as well as have procedure in place with all of the accommodation and properties and activity providers that we use along the road. And along the road. Um, however, our trips in Tanzania, Kenya are actually going ahead um, as of August. So um, as long as guests can get flights there, we are able to run these trips as of August. So we're hoping that Southern Africa will follow through soon. And um, Jonathan, what is your, your favorite guided group tour with Jane Safaris and why? Take about, tell me about you know, what's unique and what's unique about the destination or the wildlife that you see along. I mean, people want to hear all about the wildlife. Uh what is my favorite uh, trip? Wow, I can pick all of them <laughs> because they are special in their own way, <laughs> you know. But I would say, like you said, favorite. I will, I will, I will go for for I will go for the southern experience or the northern experience. That is the Cape Town to Victoria Falls or the Victoria Falls to Cape Town trip. Um, Either way, where you start, like you say, if I'm starting from Victoria Falls, my hometown, we are starting with uh, a, a one of the seven natural wonders of the world. And uh, throw in the mix uh, uh, one of or some of the best national parks that uh, some people get only to see on National Geographic, you know, uh, the Chobes of this world, the Atoshas. And uh, you talk of the sand dunes of Namibia, unbelievable vistas and beauty that you have the oldest desert on earth, uh, that is the Namib. You have the Atlantic, uh, and some of when you're driving through the desert in Namibia, you have got every kilometer a different vista or scene that is you know, different from the last, up until you get to uh, the Fish River Canyon, which is uh, the second largest canyon on earth. So we believe, we say, and then uh, going all the way to the mother city, Cape Town. Uh, who doesn't know Cape Town? It is uh, a marvel. You know, what a way to uh, wind a trip, uh, the wine lands, the beauty of uh, uh, the, the, the peninsula. It's, 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 a, it's a lovely, uh, beautiful uh, town. So, yeah, the southern experience or northern experience, which way you take it, is one of my very favorite. It is also to do when you get to meet people along the way, you know, you get to learn about the cultures and that's what we pride ourselves in. The people that we have, uh, we have what we call Ubuntu, that is being humane. It is exposed by the people that we get to meet on the way. And uh, I think our travelers really uh, love uh, that. So, Jonathan, I'm going to pose a little bit of a more tricky question. So this is one of the trips that is yeah. 24 days long. Yeah. And um, there's quite a few days that you spend in, in a vehicle and long hours in a car. Yeah. Why should travelers still do the trip? Why is it still worth it in a nutshell? Uh, uh, it is driving or a means to an end because I always say that uh, every day different from the last and you are always rewarded with something new every day. You are always expecting either to get to this beautiful lodge, um, you know, to, to, to a beautiful park. So despite the, 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 the long driving, the gravel roads, which to me are quite an attraction on themselves, you know, people are not, some not used, uh, you know, to driving in these uh, gravel roads, but they are an attraction, yes, to themselves. There is always a reward to any day that you come uh, in, on this trip. It is loaded with, uh, you know, uh, sceneries that are so beautiful. It's never a dull moment on a day like, uh, on, a, on a trip like this. Oh, Jonathan, that is so beautifully put. Well done. I think, um, I think even myself, I've forgotten actually that when you go on a road trip like that through Africa, how really every single moment is, is different how every single day you arrive to a new destination and it's um and it's different from the the day before and that's what makes road tripping so special 
Thanks. Thanks for even reminding me, Jonathan. Um, I've got a beautiful question here from Simonia asking you, what would you say to young people aspiring to be tour guides? What would your advice be? What would I say to young people who are aspiring to be tour guides? Um, yeah. there, is, uh, there is always the thrill of traveling, uh, seeing beautiful places or new places. And I always say that uh, for your scope to be open, to be wide, you have to travel. To travel is to live. And um, here is a profession um, which is a holiday, but you are paid for, you know, and I'm talking to my boss now, you know, and uh, <laughs> but then <laughs> uh, it is it is a it is a field that, you know, when we look, uh, I mean, the trends in the world now, we are beset with uh, all these environmental problems and challenges. But as young people, it gives you a chance to do your bit if we are talking about these global warmings and all this uh, uh, conservation, uh, it is time to you know, be part of the solution. So being a guide, you pass on the information you know, as to ecotourism, responsible tourism, and uh, this global village, how we as human beings can do our little bit to save our planet because it is our planet to keep for future generations. Well said. It's given me goosebumps, Jonathan. Well said. And um, and uh, there is another question that was posted by um, Sadi Sadibu. Again, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing it um, wrongly. Mm -hmm. Sadibu. Okay, yeah. nice. So you, you know the person, I guess. Is that, um, is that my boy from Senegal? I have no idea. Maybe he will comment. Oh, yes. That's him. <laughs> it's yeah. him. So yeah. he's asking, what advice would you give guides during lockdown? And I would like to extend that question a little bit. So we know mm -hmm. times have been really tough. And yes. um, if there was a message you could give, to, to our guides right now, or maybe even to, to rangers in the national parks or yes. to people in the front of house of, of any lodges that you know, can't, um, can't host guests right now. What, yes. um, what message would it be? What, what would you want them to hear from you? Um, what would I want to advise guides during this lockdown? Um, difficult times, yes, they are. Um, but I would advise guides that uh, this will pass or will come to a time when we will learn to live alongside, uh, you know, until they find a vaccine uh, for, 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 for this COVID. But uh, I guess we will come to a time when we'll be back to doing what we love best. In the meanwhile, I guess we can be doing more of our research uh, this is time to expand uh, our knowledge of the world uh, because we'll surely be back. It might take a little while, uh, which I hope the scientists who are working behind the scenes uh, will also have some revelation and also get to find us a vaccine. But yes, we will be back. Guys, let us hold on. Let us in the meanwhile, um, you know, e uh, expand our knowledge of our field so that when it comes um, to, we are better than what we were when we went back. And um, exciting times, yes, uh, we'll be back. And let us look forward to those. Thanks, Jonathan. Very, very well said. And um, I can second that. Um, I think for all of us, it's, um, it's, it's hanging in there, um, reaching out to people, reaching out to your ne network, talk about it. Talk about how you feel and, and ask for help um, whenever you need help. It doesn't mean that everyone can help you, but um, just by verbalizing it, um, you may may find help if if, um, if you need one. So who's in the background there, Jonathan? Come on, I hear some shouting. Your kids? Uh, uh, there's, uh, I think uh, there's some interest of what is happening around. I guess uh, maybe where it has gone round that 
someone is live on air. So, yeah. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant, yeah. Jonathan. I'm going to put you a little bit on the spot and I'm going to put myself on the spot as well. Thank you. Um, Jonathan, is there any question you've always wanted to ask me or the business? <clears throat> Everything. <laughs> That, that's 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 putting me on the spot. <laughs> yeah, and I, and I think I'm also putting myself on the line right now. Um, Seeing that we are paying you for taking for going on holiday, as you put it. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, my my question basically would be that uh, I guess uh, we have had time when we have got to meet uh, guides, and uh, having gone out. Um, would you say you are happy, say, with the guides uh, that you have met? Uh, because I guess you get to look at all the info uh, that is, you know, the feedbacks and stuff. What would you advise us as guides, uh, you know, to do? Uh, I'll, 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 I'll go in and expound a little and say, uh, we you. tend at times as guides, I know my friends, and they will kill, kick me for this. That at times we take things the, you know, what we call African time. But um, uh, I guess knowing your guests, uh, travelers who come through, um, what would you advise uh, your team of guides, uh, you know, when it comes to things like African time and generally how you would envisage them to run a successful trip? That is a very beautiful question, Jonathan. And, um, and I think the, uh, the beauty about African time is patience. Mm -hmm. And I think if, if as, as people who are rooted in, in Africa, um, whether it's guides or, or or anyone really that has Africa in their blood and that is used to African time, if you could extend that patience to your travelers to get used to African time and um, to slowly um, to slowly introduce them to the to the subject and to the beauty that African time holds and uh, in a in a kind way in a clear way but in a very kind way introduce them to african time and what what benefit it can have to their holiday and to even back home um once they're back uh, in europe or the states or australia or wherever they come from so um i think yeah just that the, the patience and kindness of introducing exactly that to them would be my advice <laughs> All right, Jonathan. Um, we got about two minutes left. Um, and I want to ask you three more questions um, as a roundup. And you are obviously number one of this um, episode of um, Guide Chronicles. Um, so um, I will ask these questions, these last three questions to every single one of the guides that come on after you. Um, we're going to run these guide chronicles um, every three weeks. Um, so let me know. So three questions. Number one, Jonathan, yeah. what is your African spirit animal? What is my African spirit animal? Uh, I'll be partisan. I'll be patriotic. Um, my family name is Dume, which means okay. a zebra. So my spirit animal will obviously be a zebra. And I think uh, they are beautiful uh, in their own way. So that's my African spirit animal, the zebra. So, so uh, Jonathan, is a zebra white with black stripes or black with white stripes? Uh, it depends where you count the stripes from. <laughs> Are you counting from left to right or right to left? <laughs> yeah. Great. Okay. <laughs> but I, I'm also putting you on the spot again. I'm sorry. Why do yeah. zebras always look so bloated? Do you know? Are we... Okay, I, I'm being personal here because when you say zebras, then it includes me. I'll say that no. we as zebras... <laughs> 
<laughs> as an actual animal. We we talk about the the, the the backward fermentation, you know, in their when you're in their digestion, you know, that's when you are next or close to zebras, you will always hear these noises of some wind or air being let out. So it makes them bloated and looks like every one of them is pregnant. That basically is all about that backward fermentation that goes on in their gut. <laughs> I won't reference it back again to your okay. spirit in the mind. Sorry. Um, Jonathan, what's the most courageous thing you've ever done? What's the most courageous thing I've ever done? Yeah. The most courageous thing I ever did, like I start, when I started, I said that uh, I was working in retail, which for me was the definition of four walls of being cocooned in one place. And then the most courageous thing for me was to leave, you know, uh, what I believe my father uh, thought at that time, you know, like when he looks at tie and jacket, then he thinks this is the ideal, what I sent my son to school to, you know, this was like a dream job for me in retail. But then uh, thanks to uh, love, like I said, uh, thanks to guiding tourism that came uh, my way, I had the courage to say, Dad, look, this is not my calling. I think I have a different calling which is being a guide. And uh, I think uh, to date when I speak to him, yes, he's prouder than if I had stayed in retail. <laughs> Thank you, Jonathan. Okay, and then last but not least, the question, what advice would you give to any scholar or any pupil, any kid in school um, who would like to be a guide? Um, what advice I would... Uh, you know, I think in, any, uh, in each of us, there is a seed. And um, when you ask me, looking at me, I think that seed, basically, when someone is looking at me and they want to be me, it means that the guiding spirit is in them. So go for it. Uh, it is one of the most beautiful fields, uh, rewarding, I would say, that one can... <clears throat> get into, uh, you meet exciting people every day and uh, beautiful places that uh, uh, most people do not have uh, a chance to visit probably in their lifetime. But uh, these are like your playground. So at the end of the day, uh, this is a field, I would say, young people, should you want to go for it and also think that uh, now guides should have an impact uh, when it comes to conservation. So David Attenborough, yes, 94. Uh, we thank him, he has done great for conservation, but uh, one day he's going to hand the button and it is to the next guides and it is that person who envisages to be a guide um, in the coming days. So young people go for it, who probably are the next David Attenborough that we can be talking about. Wow, David. Um, uh, sorry, wow, Jonathan. What, what, what words, what a quote to actually say David Attenborough is going to hand over the baton to you, to you guides. So, um, wow. It's, um, I'm almost speechless. Guys, if you are listening right now and uh, you enjoy Jonathan's answers and this chat, please give him a thumbs up, give him a clap and a well done. I mean, Jonathan, well done for your first live session. It's been Thanks, incredible. Guys. First one of it. many episodes, I hope. Thank um, you. The next Thank episode, you very much. Yeah. The next episode will actually be um, with um, Chantal, one of our oh, wow. also yeah. longest standing guides, female uh, guide. Um, uh, I'm looking forward to that conversation. And um, if you guys want to get reminders of that, please um, like us on Facebook or just follow um, follow this um, this episode and follow Jane Safaris. And um, before I leave. Jonathan, who would you nominate yeah. after Chantal to come and chat to us here? 
Um, I, either Aaron, <coughs> Aaron, Aaron on Tando. Yes. Okay, Aaron on Tando. Yes. Okay, great. Yeah, we will. Oh, Lucky um, Mafana, Lucky Mafana is also in the mix. You know, one of my favorite okay. young men because <laughs> I remember when he started. When he started, I took him out. Uh, you know, so what he is, I basically made him, and what what he is not, is not me. <laughs> but anyway, Lucky Mafana, he, 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 he's, he's a great guy. Yes. Okay, cool. All right, so we've yeah. got three nominations from you. I think we might have to speed up these episodes here. So. Thank you, Jonathan. This was it's really, really wonderful. Um, my absolute thank pleasure. Thank you for having me here. Okay. Cheers. You, Cheers, guys. Cheers. Thank Cheers. you.